Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We're going to have the, there we go. We're going to have uh, a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Thank you. Roll call, please, Mrs. Garza. Chairman Williams. Here. Vice Chair Seaworth. Here. Mr. Demaria. Here. Mrs. Williams. Here. Mrs. Stevens. Here. Mr. Hollingsworth. Here. Mrs. Brooks. Here. Ms. Osorio Flores. Here. Ms. Tanoli. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Garza. Dr. Newman, are there any additions and corrections to the agenda? No, sir. Thank you very much. First item up on the agenda, superintendent's announcements and spotlight, Mrs. Al Radford. Just a minute. Come on. Gotta hold it in. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thank you, Chairman Williams. Good evening, other members of the board tonight, and good evening to everyone that has joined us this evening. I am very excited to share a few um, spotlights and announcements with you this evening. We will start with Osborne High School Student Council Association. Once again, the Osborne High School Student Council Association has given Manassas City Public Schools another reason to be proud. The group has been recognized as a National Gold Council of, of Excellence uh, for the seventh year in a row. Nara Lee, Director of Student Leadership for the National Association of Secondary School Principals said, Receiving a National Gold Council of Excellence Award reflects the highest dedication of the par on the part of the school to providing a strong, well-rounded student council program. The student council, um, National Student Council applauds the work of the National Gold Councils of Excellence and challenges them to continue their leadership and service to the schools and communities. To meet the requirements for the National Student Council National Gold um, Council of Excellence Award, a student council must meet a variety of criteria. In addition to basic requirements such as a written constitution, regular meetings, a democratic election process, the councils have demonstrated successful sponsorship and participation in activities such as leadership development and service to the school and community. Osborne Student Council documented 52 activities and submitted four projects in the National Project Database in order to be considered for this award. Councils that are awarded the gold level have successfully demonstrated the highest level of leadership. I said it in the beginning, and it is worth saying again, Osborne High School has received this award for the past seven years. In addition, the Virginia Student Councils Association honors member schools who promote leadership and community service through their school's student council activities by awarding an achievement award. In order to be recognized, schools must apply and submit documentation of completing a variety of activities throughout the school year. This process is a bit simpler. The Osborne SDA has a total of eight projects that have to be submitted, one of which is required. Osborne has been recognized for this particular award for the past eight years. The Osborne SCA is advised by Robin Albrecht, Jessica Yankovitz, and Sarah Weaver. Tonight, we are pleased to have Ms. Weaver here, along with Michael Ventura and Samantha Mora, who serve as officers 
So if you all would please join us up front. I would just like to note that these two awards are a true representation of the diverse program of work that the Osborne uh, Student Council has implemented since 2014. Osborne says they are anxious to begin the 21-22 school year so they can continue with this level of excellence. So congratulations to all of you. Congratulations. All right. Our next recognition for the evening, Osborne High School again, and Baldwin Intermediate School has a partnership. Each year, the National Technical Honor Society members do career day presentations for the Baldwin intermediate students showcasing their CTE program. This year, Ms. Lori White, Baldwin Intermediate School counselor, reached out to Arnaz uh, Dotavala, advisor to the National Technical Honor Society, and mentioned that she was impressed with the group of students that visited Baldwin Intermediate last year. Ms. White wanted the students to be mentors to fifth and sixth graders who might need a little more motivation, support, and encouragement in school. An interest form was created and research was conducted based on students' needs, so students from Osborne's National Technical Honor Society and the Positive Change Ambassadors Group, which is PBIS student representatives, could be assigned as mentors. Together, Ms. White and Ms. Deltavala trained and prepared the mentors on how to appropriately participate in the program. The student mentors meet their mentees at least once a week they introduce themselves, discuss their interests, and establish relationships with each other. The mentors and mentees are all doing exceptionally well and find value in building peer relationships. Tonight, Ms. White from Baldwin Intermediate and Ms. Deltavala from Osborne are here. I believe they may have a student with them, so I'm going to ask them to come forward. And I believe Ms. White has something she will share with us. You all come on. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, I'm just so impressed with this group of students and I wish we had started this program earlier in the year. It happened when we were having conversations um, with my administration and um, trying to engage the students in this virtual environment and, um, and I said, you know, we need mentors. We really need mentors for these kids. And um, I was thinking of the community and adults, and, and Dr. Wagner reminded me of Ms. Dodevala and these students, and I said, yes! And so that's when we called and um, got it going. So I'm just really looking forward to this to continue, for this to continue for uh, many years. Thank you. So we have Samantha. Michael and Nalan that are here with us tonight. Thank you. <laughs> this is, I know, right? Maybe. Actually, no. You don't need to. I can see everyone. Okay. You ready? Okay, 
Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And at this time, it's a bittersweet moment for us. We have some special recognitions. Uh, we'd like to go ahead and turn this over to Ms. Robin Williams, who will share some information with us. All right, I do not need to come down there. I'm going to stay here. <laughs> um, but Mr. Osorio Flores and Ms. Uh, Tanoli, will you please come up? Right there. All right, I guess I'll come up. That's right. All right, I changed my mind. I'll come up here. I just wanted to thank the two of you ladies for such a very eventful school year, very uh, different way of being a student representative this year. But in any event, I want to thank you for all your service to Manassas City Public Schools. And um, Ms. Osorio, I have to wish you the best, best of luck for your upcoming future and years ahead of you. I know you're going to do great things and keep in touch with us and let us know how you're doing and what you're doing. And we always invite you back. And thank you for everything you did uh, this year. Although I feel like you probably feel like, well, I don't know that I did a whole lot, but believe it or not, you did. And we really, truly appreciate it. And with that, the board thanks you, the two of you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Williams. And be before we take our photo, I also would like to note for Ms. Osorio Flores, we have a special gold cord for her to wear during graduation from Osborne. Thank you. <laughs> I guess you got this today. Mm -hmm. Sort of. <laughs> okay. We have one final recognition for tonight, and I'm going to not really say much about it because uh, Ms. Uh, Garza is going to assist me with that presentation. Dr. Saunders, I would like to congratulate you on your appointment as the next superintendent of Manassas Park City Schools. I feel like Manassas Park has found a gem in you. Uh, it will be a huge loss for us here at Manassas City, but we are so proud of you and expect great things um, coming out of Manassas Park. And I'm looking forward to our ability to work together as we take our two divisions up to the next level. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Saunders. This is Kara Grosser and Eric Mock, your administrative team from Jenny Dean Elementary School. On behalf of both of us, and I know the entire Jenny Dean community, we want to thank you for your service to the school division. Mr. Mock and I have both worked with you for a number of years now, and I know both of us appreciate the support that you've given us through our careers and the support that you've given to our students in achieving everything they can through their learning in Manassas City Public Schools. Hi, Dr. Saunders. 
you and I started together back in 2002 at METS, and I want to thank you for all your support that you've given me throughout the years over at METS and my transition over here at Jenny Dean. You're going to do fantastic over there, and we're going to miss you. Dr. Saunders, I am so grateful for all the experiences that I've had the opportunity to learn from you. From when you taught me in one of my master's classes, so when you guided me as a new executive director of the Education Foundation and have encouraged me to believe in my vision for professional development because you've always believed in me. You did everything you could to support not only my work, but the work of the whole department and the school division. Over the past five years, you have been a calming force whenever I started to feel overwhelmed. And I always appreciated your constant reminders that everything will work out as long as we approach things with a positive outlook and a smile. I will miss working with you, but I am so happy for you as you take this next step and can't wait to see what's in store for you. Good thing you aren't going too far. Hello, Dr. Saunders. I just wanted to congratulate you on your new position as superintendent of Anastas Park Public Schools. I wish you the very best. Hey, Melissa, congratulations on your new position at Manassas Park. I know you'll do great things over there. It's been great working with you here for the past several years in Manassas City. Uh, can't wait to hear about the, the great things you'll achieve across the street. Uh, when you reach those difficult times, difficult decisions, remember this lion proverb. Keep it the same or change it. It's that simple. All right, good luck. We'll see you later. Dr. Saunders, I remember when you came to Metz as principal. I don't remember if it was a middle school or a high school. I wish you continued success as you move forward to Manassas Park as superintendent. I know that students, parents, teachers, faculty, and the community will be blessed. Hi, Dr. Saunders. Congratulations on being named superintendent for Manassas Park Schools. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you for your friendship and your mentorship and your leadership. You have always modeled for me to find the humor and the joy in every day as we are working with teachers and students and to always keep people at the center of my decision making and I promise to keep doing that. So again, congratulations and I'm wishing you all the best in your new position. Hi, Dr. Saunders, Karis Brooks here at Hayden Elementary. I just wanted to say congratulations on your new appointment. It is well-deserved and I know you will do a great job. Thank you for your leadership here uh, and your guidance and your expertise that you have given me while I've been here at Manassas. Uh, we will miss you and I hope we're able to keep in touch. Hello, Melissa. First and foremost, congratulations. I'm super excited for you and your new position and all the great things that I know you're gonna take to the park. I just want to say thank you for bringing me to Manassas City. I have enjoyed all of our 17 years together. That is just so hard to believe when I think about it. And from the moment we started at Mets, we've been a great team and I'm super sad to see it end. Uh, but again, I'm grateful and appreciative for all of our time together, all of the things we've learned from one another, all of the great things we've accomplished, and certainly I appreciate not only our professional relationship, but our friendship. Again, I wish you nothing but the best, and congratulations. Hi, Dr. Saunders. Congratulations. You will be incredibly missed. I wanna thank you for all of the things that you've done for me personally and for Baldwin Intermediate School. You have made fantastic opportunities for myself and for the students and staff at Baldwin Intermediate. And there is nothing that I could possibly say to pay tribute to the work that you have done, the things you've accomplished and the supports that you've provided. So I will allow someone else to put their words on it and I will share with you a short poem. Great leaders, awaken minds, bring people together, communicate effectively, enlighten and empower, dare to take calculated risks, foster collaboration, help you do for yourself, joyfully embrace diversity, give you the tools to succeed, lead by example, keep an open mind, 
motivate with respect and never give up on you. Quest to make learning fun. Value everyone's inputs. Unwrap talents and abilities and zest to make a difference. So thank you for everything. You truly are a great leader. Congratulations again. Dr. Saunders, congratulations on your new endeavor. I know that you'll be great. You're definitely gonna be missed here. Just wanna let you know that um, I appreciate everything that you've done for me over the years. I think it's been about 12 years that um, I've served uh, with you or under you here um, as a principal or an assistant principal. So I appreciate everything as we started at Weems, grinding there, getting everything moving and uh, coming here to Mets in a transition. And this year has been an uh, incredibly interesting year. So you're always available, you're always positive, and um, I, I really appreciate that about you. And just really appreciate that you've always been there whenever I needed you. So uh, your new crew is going to be very lucky to have you. So keep being a great person, a great professional. Um, in terms of Mets Middle School here, I know that these are the hallways that you roam. You roamed for many years. Um, I remember as, I think it was about a decade and a half ago, serving as a summer school intern for a short period of time. You had me make about a thousand phone calls for Algebra One parents, and uh, and you opened up your your heart and your and your ears and gave me a voice and um, really gave great advice. So I know that you're going to continue doing that. I wish you all the best from one Ginzer to another. Go down there and, and crush it. You rock. Good luck. Be great. Thank you, Dr. Saunders. Dr. Melissa Saunders. Pretty soon I won't be able to just walk down to this office and say, hey, but I guess it's for a good reason, a bittersweet reason. Very, very excited for you being appointed as superintendent of Manassas Park City Schools. I know that this is an exciting time for you on your professional journey. And so um, I just wanna say congratulations. We've known each other since 2002 and we definitely have had some great experiences here in Manassas City, but I also know that you will certainly have wonderful experiences in Manassas Park. And at least you're just a phone call or text away, maybe even a holler. I might yell up 28 and see if you can hear me, but just know that we're very proud of you and that we expect nothing but great things um, out of your work there in Manassas Park. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dr. Saunders. I just want to say uh, we're going to miss you, and I just want to tell you um, thank you for everything you've done for Osborne High School and for me personally. You know, you've always been welcoming since I got first got here. I still remember um, my car broke down one of the first days of work, and you came on the side of the road and, and helped pick me up to get me to work, and that was kind of indicative of my whole time with you. You're always there to help out, and uh, you went the extra mile to to help us and, um, and I really appreciate that and help me personally. So thank you for that. Thank you for your support of Osborne and um, I wish y'all the best. They're lucky to get you and I know you're gonna do well and I hope we continue to stay, uh, stay in touch. So all the best. Hi, Hi Melissa. Melissa. I've got Rob with me since we met you together wrestling moons and moons ago. We just wanna congratulate you on your new endeavor with Manassas Park Public Schools. You are gonna make a phenomenal superintendent. I am just so glad you're gonna be close by. Congratulations. Sorry to see you go, but they're lucky to have you. Thanks. wanted to say something about your slide. That's why I was asking. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, well, for the slide, it's something that I came across, I guess, a couple years ago about um, our duty to not only raise children, but to raise them to, to be a cool and heartless world, but to raise them to be, um, to make the world a little less cool, a little less heartless. And I think Dr. Saunders has epitomized that everywhere she's gone in the city, she's worked to make our kids be empowered so they can make the world a little less cool and a little less heartless. So I thought that captured your essence perfectly. So that's why I put the quote up there. And we're gonna miss you. So 
at this time, I'm going to ask Dr. Saunders to come up front. I think they have a presentation for you. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Before we move on, I'll ask any board members if they want to make any comments before we um, go to the next item. And I'll start with Mr. DeMaria. Thank you, sir. Um, Mrs. Garza is supposed to keep track of me and let me know when that uh, video was supposed to be in. So it, it was her fault that I, I didn't get one done. Um, my daughter was at Mets when Dr. Saunders was there, and luckily for her, I had daughters and not sons, and they took after Sue and not me. Otherwise, you would have known me a whole lot better back then, too, because um, I'm sure they would have been in your office. Um, I've been on the board for 15 years, and you have been so instrumental to whatever successes I've had. It's so comforting to have someone there that knows what they're doing, or at least acts like she knows what she's doing, um, and has made my life so much easier. Um, Manassas Park is, is very lucky to be getting you, and um, people over there should not make fun of the number of kids you have. They should not make fun of how often you know you take maternity leave or anything like that. That 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 is my exclusive purview there. Um, the, she's always so prepared. I, I, I remember a time, I, I can't go into details of what we were working on, but we were at central office and we had to remember what happened at Mets 10 or 15 years ago. I, I, it was a long time ago. And here comes Dr. Saunders with a composition notebook. And she opens it up and she reads off what happened. She, she, she's like Rain Man. She reads off what happened exactly that day that was in question. I, I, she must have a thousand notebooks at home of her whole life. Um, and, and that's the type of person she is, the, the way she did her work. I'm very excited that you're getting this opportunity. I'm very excited that you're going to be next door rather than going to Arizona or someplace stupid like that. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Stone, because I'm sure you're watching, or you will be. Um, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate the work you've done for our children, um, the friendship you've given me, the leeway you've given me to be me. It, it, it takes a little bit. Um, and uh, I'm sure Manassas Park is, is thrilled to get you and they don't even know how good it's going to be. Um, this will always be your home because you will have spent more time here than anywhere else, I think. And if not, it, it was better here than anywhere else. And just remember that you are deeply loved in Manassas City Public Schools. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other board members want to comment on Ms. Stevens? Because Tim comments, I have to comment. Um, Dr. Saunders, mine's more on a personal note. If, as 
Some of you may not know, we have children who are about the same age, little people, and we first met as parents of crazy toddlers. And I don't know if you remember way back when, um, you and I had a conversation, and the conversation we had, I don't know if you remember it, the conversation we had really pushed me to follow my dreams and change my career and become a SPED teacher. So for that, I say thank you, and I'll always appreciate that. Um, in listening to what everyone said in that video, I think Katie Keegan said it best when she said, you've been a calming force, especially as we've gone through this pandemic. Every board meeting, you were there. Your force, your calm, your demeanor was there, and you could answer any question we threw at you. And nothing got you flustered, even when they were really annoying questions, like for me or him. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't say it. <laughs> but I really appreciate you. We're going to miss you here. Manassas Park is very lucky to have you. I think you're going to do great things there. And I want you to know, friends I know who teach in Manassas Park have already asked me about you, and I have already told them they're very lucky to have you, and they'll be very happy. So thank you for all you've done on a personal level and a professional level, and good luck. Thank you. Now look down, see Mr. Hollingsworth has anything? Uh, no? Uh, good? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. I look to my left, uh, Ms. Siebert. Dr. Saunders, I just want to quickly thank you. Um, you're an ultimate professional, and you always deliver the message, whatever news it is, or whatever is going on with a smile and positivity, and I sure appreciate that. Um, thank you for all you've done for us, and good luck in your new venture. Thank you. Uh, and then Mrs. Williams talked already. Very nice Pima Rob and Mrs. Brooks. Dr. Saunders, I haven't known you very long as I'm new on the board, but I have been in the city for five years and I've heard nothing but accolades about you. I have friends who were at Mets, their children, um, <laughs> when you were there and everyone just raves about you. And I, you know, it's very bittersweet that you're leaving, but Manassas Park is very lucky and congratulations, you deserve it. And I think that's it. And before we move on, I'll just I'll quickly add, um, there's a saying that goes like, we should give people their flowers when they're around and not wait. So we're literally giving you flowers, but <laughs> uh, but metaphorically as well. Uh, we appreciate everything you've done, and we really are going to miss you, and we really look forward to seeing the great things you're going to do. But again, like a lot of folks have said, you're not too far away. Maybe Ms. Bradford and, and I can get out there and scream your name. You'll hear us at 28. <laughs> but thank you. OK, um, that's an, the end of the announcements and spotlights. How are the meetings so far? Uh, uh, next on the board committee comments, um, Academics Committee, Ms. Seberg. Academics Committee has a meeting next week, um, the 19th at 4 p.m., and I'll have a further report after that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Policy Committee, Mrs. Stevens. There we go. Uh, Policy Committee has a meeting next Wednesday, Wednesday after the Academics meeting at 5 p.m., and we are on the consent agenda for later on this evening. Thank you. Mr. DeMaria, Education Support and Finance? Nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. OK, thank you. And then uh, Mrs. Williams, personnel? The personnel has no, uh, the personnel committee has no um, report tonight, sir. Thank you very much. Um, next, citizens' comments. There are none uh, written down or filed, and I don't see any citizens aiming to comment. So I will move on to the next item, which is the consent agenda. May I have a motion, please? Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Seberg, second by Mr. DeMaria that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it, 7-0, the consent agenda passes. Next up, discussion agenda, old business. Reimagine and accelerate SY 2021-2022, Dr. Saunders. So good evening, everyone. Um, first, I do just have to say a few quick words. Um, I am so honored and blessed to have worked in Manassas City Public Schools for the years that I have at all the different levels. And, um, you know, I 
I do my work because of the students and the staff and the community that, um, that we serve. And I've done it proudly for all of those years. Um, it's very emotional to hear uh, all of those different things, but um, it is definitely rewarding. And some of the best experiences I've had growing up here in Manassas City. And as you've said, I, I do consider this the place where I grew up. I, um, I walked into Metz Middle School at 29 years old and spent the next 12 years of my life and career. Um, my kids grew up in the hallways there. Um, and so I really am very proud and um, just honored to have served the time that I get to serve here. I look forward to my next adventure. Uh, it's going to be fun and um, I won't be far away. So I continue to work with all of those that I worked with throughout my time here. So, so tonight I am here to talk a little bit more about returning um, in, the, in the next school year. So good evening, Chairman Williams, Vice Chair Seberg, members of the board, Dr. Newman. I'm pleased to be here tonight to share with you our Manassas City Public Schools Reunite, Reignite, and Reimagine update for tonight. The work presented this evening represents work that's happening across the division in every department and every level with every staff member and um, just everywhere going on. Some of my colleagues are here with us this evening, but most are watching uh, from other locations. And uh, we're happy to answer any questions that we might be able to answer this evening. Tonight, we're going to talk about current community data, summer 2021 learning, and our um, Manassas City Public Schools Reimagine and Accelerate Instructional Task Force. You've seen these slides a few times. Um, this is the Virginia Department of Health publishes the weekly transmission extent dashboard. The dashboard is intended to help inform state and local officials about the effects of COVID-19 on each region and help them decide whether, the act, whether to act on additional mitigation measures for individual communities. This data is updated regularly, and the most recent update is from May 1st, 2021. This graphic shows the current status of COVID-19 in Northern Virginia is decreasing and considered moderate burden at modern activity level. The burden and trend scores as the region, for the region are calculated both as an average of the composite and trend scores. As of May 1st, 2021, the composite burden score for Northern Virginia was 11.4, moderate burden. The trend score was 3.3 and is, in, is in considered decreasing. The CDC has published a set of indicators for dynamic school decision making. Those indicators are thresholds, help communities better understand the risk of introduction and transmission of COVID-19 in schools. These categories represent low transmission coded in blue, moderate transition in yellow, substantial, substantial transmission in orange, and high in red. The Virginia Department of Health has updated their graphics to reflect these colors and codes from the CDC. The most recent update dated May 1st, 2021. This graphic reflects the combination of core indicators and is representative of our current community transmission rate reported as moderate. This graphic represents the two core indicators. The indicators are the total number of new cases per 100,000 persons in the moderate range and the percentage of PCR tests that are positive also in the moderate range. This graphic represents the secondary indicators. Secondary indicators include the percent change in new cases at low, the percentage of hospital inpatient beds that are occupied as moderate, and the percentage of hospital inpatient beds that are occupied by patients with COVID-19 as low. As we close out the school year, we want to share some exciting Osborne High School events. The Senior Community Scholarship Ceremony will be on May 12th. The Department Awards Ceremony on May 13th. Both will be recorded and published for viewing. Uh, materials collection is May 24th through the 28th. The Senior dri drive through is May 25th, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the bus loop at Osborne High School. 
May 26th will be a senior class meeting. And finally, on May 28th, the graduation at 7 p.m. at Jiffy Lube Live. Just a reminder for all of uh, our families and parents, it is in an effort to, conti to continue to maintain a safe and healthy environment. We remind our parents to assess students daily to ensure they are feeling well and have no symptoms. Each day, we ask you to check for COVID-19 symptoms. If your child has any of these symptoms, anyone in the household is sick, or your child generally doesn't feel well, please keep your child home. Summer learning opportunities will take place this summer. Grades K through four will focus on reading, and grades five through eight will focus on reading and math. Students grades K through eight will attend summer learning in person from June 7th through the 25th. Schools will be extending invitations to selected students starting next week. At grades 9 through 12, summer learning will be focused on credit recovery and will be virtually through Edmentum. Summer school will be from June 7th through July 11th, and an Osborne High School teacher will be assigned to each student to monitor and support progress. We will be offering in-person SOL boot camps for selected students. Extended school year for our school dependent special education students will be from June 14th to July 8th and students will be serviced at Dean, Baldwin and Osborne. I ready K through eight imagine learning K through eight for level one and two ESOL students and a Schoology summer enrichment course grades K through 12 are available to any student in the division. Last meeting, we shared the Reimagine and Accelerate Instructional Task Force with the board. This work has been focused around instructional conversations for reimagining and accelerating learning for all students in a post-pandemic return to school. Our task force is made up of dedicated teachers, administrators, and instructional specialists. The purpose of the task force is to collaborate around instructional planning for the school year 21-22. We do anticipate that some students will have new or widened instructional gaps. The task force focused on math and literacy, English language arts, since those skills transcend other areas throughout the school, throughout, throughout the stu student's school experience. This slide represents our K-4 task force members across the division. Our 5-8 task force members And finally, our 912 task force members. The task force began meeting in February after principals identified members of their school staff to participate. Initial recommendations from each subgroup were shared with the school instructional staff in early April. All staff had the opportunity to provide feedback to the subgroups. Subgroups reviewed staff feedback and determined revisions for final recommendations. Members of our leadership team are finalizing the recommendations from the task force around the areas of instructional time in Tier 1, professional learning communities, additional time for staff planning and professional development, staffing needs, and resources. The task force recommendations and more information will be presented to the Academic Committee on May 19th at the, at the meeting. As previously uh, talked about, Senate Bill 1303, signed by Governor Northam, does require all schools to offer in-person instruction for at least the minimum number of required instructional hours during the 21-22 school year. This equates to 180 days or at least 990 hours of in-person instruction. The bill does not require divisions to offer virtual option, but does allow if the division chooses. The language of the bill can be found in the link provided below. Tonight, we do have an action item related to the virtual option for the 21-22 school year. Based on this bill, 1303, MCPS will provide in-person instruction five days per week. Should the board approve a virtual option, virtual instruction for those that elect it would be through Virtual Virginia, with the exception of our special education students who require an alternate curriculum. Those students would be served by Manassas City Public Schools employees. 
Teachers are provided through Virtual Virginia, and students are given both synchronous and asynchronous instruction in that virtual option. Students are still Manassas City Public School students for funding, accountability, student supports and services, and for participation in clubs and sports, but all of their instruction would occur through Virtual Virginia. If a virtual option is approved, staff is prepared to send out a parent survey in late May. And this concludes our update for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Saunders. Are there any comments and questions from the board members who are sitting on the dais? Um, oh, Dr. Newman. Chairman, I just wanted to provide some clarification uh, for the board before they take action on the uh, return to learn for the school year 21-22 school year. Um, the first action is to determine if you're going to offer a virtual option. Uh, the second one is if you take that option of offering something virtual, uh, who will provide that instruction? Uh, I, I believe that our teachers gave it all that they had this year with trying to do both. I think for my recommendation, uh, at least for next year, and they can be revisited at a, a different time, uh, is not to allow our teachers to split their focus. And if we're going to have a virtual option to use the virtual Virginia um, option. Uh, I know we do what we want to do in Manassas City, uh, but I can tell you that um, some of our neighbors uh, some are saying no to virtual, some are agreeing to the virtual option, some are agreeing with the virtual option for only specific students with medical needs. Um, I'm just sharing that with you to let you know what our neighbors are doing. I know we're going to do uh, what's in the best interest of Manassas City Public School students, but I can tell you, um, just my opinion, what's best for Manassas City the family of teachers and instructional aides and administrators is at least for the next year to not allow them to split their focus. Um, so just wanted to put that out there before you guys uh, voted tonight. All right. Thank you, Dr. Newman. Um, board member comments? I'm looking to my right first, uh, Mr. DeMarion. Um, I was going to save the comments for the action agenda, but maybe we'll go quickly through the action agenda then. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with, with Dr. Newman. Our teachers have been put through um, a really hard time this year. <laughs> the, the, um, and uh, to try and put that on them again next year is, is um, in my mind, not even an option. So I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna vote, be voting in favor of this. Um, and I also believe that uh, as Dr. Newman said, we do what we think is best for our kids. And there are some of our kids that are going to need virtual next year. And for us not to offer it, I think, is, is, a, um, is a bad thing. It, it, it's, uh, the kids have been through so much this year, and some of them may not pre be prepared to come back. Uh, some of them may not feel safe coming back because of the pandemic. Um, some of them might be uh, thriving in virtual learning. So I, I, I'm in total favor of this right now. I would also be in favor of uh, as the next school year progresses to investigate and do some research into how we could offer virtual uh, through Manassas City Public Schools. Um, I, I think to try and do that this year would be uh, out of the question. We've got enough things going on. If we can get it back to a little bit of normalcy this next year and then research and, and see if we could offer that to our students that do thrive that way, I, I think that would be the best thing. But for right now, um, once this becomes an action item, I, I will be voting in favor of it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Stevens. Um, Dr. Saunders, just a couple questions on virtual Virginia. We have a, the VDOE gives us a set number of spots or seats for virtual Virginia. So uh, 
the virtual Virginia options have changed significantly right. this year as, as it's become much more um, available. We do receive certain seats for virtual Virginia. Typically, they're used by Osborne High School for okay. specific students, and there's a certain number that we do not get charged for. Okay. Um, but the total number of seats that we would have access to uh, for a full virtual option, K through 12, um, is not limited at this time. So it's a, so we wouldn't be capped at a specific number. For this coming school year, it's whoever would like to attend virtual Virginia can do so. Correct. Now, we, we are charged for that. We okay. will pay a cost for that, but okay. there are a small number of courses that we do that students can sign up for that there is not a charge. Okay. Um, and then SB 1303, has a piece in it that talks about students being able to move back and forth in and out of the virtual option. Do you know if that's a possibility with virtual Virginia? Or are you locked in per quarter or semester or do you know? I can tell you uh, that came up this morning <laughs> on our superintendent call. Uh, we will be paying that amount for that student okay. regardless. Okay. Um, but the parent, it is the parent's choice. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they want to be in virtual, whether they want to uh, be in person, and that can change as often as the parent would like. Okay, okay thank you. Um, and I'm going to go on record saying I would not vote in favor of anything that required our teachers to teach concurrently. <laughs> it's not a valid or effective instructional model, and it doesn't just hurt teachers, it hurts students as well. So I would not vote in favor of anything that required our teachers to teach concurrently. So thank you. Thank you. I'll look down with Mr. Hollingsworth. Do you have anything to add? Uh, Mr. Stevens asked all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, That's what we got it for. <laughs> thank you. Now I'll look to my left, uh, Mrs. Seabird. Thank you. I, I do believe that our focus should be back on getting our teachers in the classroom, teaching five days a week with our students. But I do have a question about virtual Virginia. Is every class and every grade available? Like if a second grader went in, second grader could take PE, music, art, okay? Yes, and so, so at the elementary level, there's a full, um, uh, a full options for courses. At the middle school level as well, and then obviously the high school level is more by course, whatever that student is taking. The, the courses may not match up exactly to what we offer in at METS, mm -hmm. say for example, in the right rotations or mm -hmm. anything like that, but comparable courses across K through 12 are available. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Williams? Yes, Dr. Saunders, I do have a question. I'm going to back up and go to um, the slides with summer learning. Um, you had mentioned that invitations to selective students were going to go out next week. Is, are any of these summer learning um, courses, opportunities available to anyone who would like to take advantage of these opportunities? over the summer? So the in-person um, K through eight would be by invitation, Only. and it is our goal to invite as many students as we can, okay. um, starting uh, with the data around those students that um, potentially have the greatest gaps. Um, but that doesn't mean that, it, that we would just end it at a certain number at a certain date or a certain mm -hmm. um, group. We would try to have as many students as we could possibly take with the mitigation strategies and the staffing that we have available. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Um, Mrs. Brooks. I believe all of the um, information has been comprehensive and I don't have any questions, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brooks. Okay, thank you again, Dr. Saunders, we appreciate it. The next item on the agenda um, is under the action agenda, student achievement, K through 12, science resource adoption. Welcome. So I, I'm actually just gonna stay up here the rest of the evening. Uh, so what you have in front of you, uh, last week, um, Dr. Jones, or last board meeting, um, Dr. Jones presented our comprehensive K-12 science resource adoption. Um, she shared with you the process that everyone went through, the teachers, the 
um, opportunity for everyone to have input. And tonight we are here to ask for um, an action on this uh, adoption. All right. Thank you. Um, with that, um, may I have a motion, please? Sir, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the K-12 science resource, resource adoption as presented. Second. A motion by Mr. Demaria, second by Mrs. Stevens, that the school board of the city of Manassas approve the K-12 science resource adoption as presented. Is there any discussion? I'll say one thing. Yes, sir. As per usual, uh, if anybody missed our last meeting, we had a lot of discussion on this, a lot of good information. So uh, everybody should be informed already. So that's why there won't be a whole lot more discussion, I don't think. Thank, Thank you, sir. And, um, not seeing any other hands up. Um, I will ask for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, 7-0. The motion passes. Thank you all. And then the last um, major item on the agenda, reopening SY 2021-2022. So I will ask for a motion and then for discussion. Mr. Chair, I move that the School Board of the City of Manassas approve the return to learn options for the school year 2021-2022. Second. Motion by Ms. Vice Chair Seberg, second by Mrs. Brooks, that the School Board of the City of Manassas approve the return to learn options for the school year 2021-2022. Is there any discussion? Dr. Newman? Okay, so I will ask the maker of the motion to uh, amend the motion to say approve the return to learn options, um, including um, virtual Virginia as a full time virtual option for students for the 21 22 school year. Yes. Are you amenable to that? Yes. Seconder is amenable? Ms. Brooks? Okay. So I just amended the motion, which means that the motion now specifically states that virtual Virginia will be the full time virtual option for students for the 21-22 school year. Thank you, sir, for clarifying. Um, any discussion? No, we discussed it. We can have more? Nope, okay. Dr. Newman brought up exactly what I was gonna bring up, so thank you for that. Okay, cool. Well, uh, in that case, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it, 7-0. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Saunders. Mm -hmm. You can stay if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, and when the, Uh, Dr. Newman was clarifying, and um, based on the presentation earlier, this means we have five days a week in person. So five days a week in person, which we are pretty much required to do by state law, but I want everyone to know that for sure. So Manassas City Schools 21-22 school year will be five days a week in person, and those who want virtual will have virtual Virginia as an option. Thank you, sir. Okay. Board member comments. Um, we'll start off with the student board members, and I guess this may be your last time, Ms. Osorio Flores. Sure. Thank you, Chairman Williams. Sorry that I'm not dressed up. Um, I came from practice, and I skedaddled here. Okay, so first off, I wanted to say thank you to the board for our, honestly uh, making me feel welcome as a student representative and it's it's been a great experience um, I've seen many things many students many um, schools come together and just have a good community with each other and good connections that lead like for me for example I came from Weems and I grew up here in Manassas and it's been an experience having mentorships like you guys as well and many connections that can also help us later on in the future and it's been an eye-opening experience and I wanted to say congratulations to Dr. Saunders as well. I probably didn't, did not like really know you that much as well <laughs> but I've seen that you've always been there at Osborne um, talking to the teachers seeing what you can help with and it's truly a dedication if it's been that many years honestly as well <laughs> and I, I give you props for scanning kids as well because I know that's frustrating because uh, I can say that myself because I'm, you know, a teenager. And um, I wanted to start off also by saying congratulations to all the seniors that are graduating this year because I know it's not been easy. 
especially with the pandemic and knowing that, oh, we don't have a prom, we don't have this and that, but we've been pushing pushing through it all. And um, I know some of us have been busy with work, sports, or just getting our like, mental health together, especially because virtual has, has been a challenge, honestly, and staying focused on one thing. And um, I like encourage everyone, even if they're going to do it virtually or to continue focusing on themselves as, as a person, to continue to grow, and to remember that your mental health is always first before anything else, because that's what is the major push for your future, and to continue to spread positivity to those people and giving a hand. If there's no one there, remember there's always help, school, teachers, anyone. And I want to congratulate the girls across because we won a game for, against Garfield and the boys um, soccer for winning um, against Battlefield as well. That was that was a good one. And I want to encourage every student to come out and take advantage of the summer classes that are being offered because uh, that can be an extra push to an extra course or something and to challenge yourself during the summer as well. And I would like to say that hopefully everything goes out well for the class of 2022 because... I don't know how it's going to go. I didn't expect my senior year to go like this. And I hope it's filled with many surprises, but not, hopefully not another pandemic, but more <laughs> surprises with good stuff. So, yeah, I wanted to say thank you to everyone for always being there, an email away, a call away. Thank you. And I hope everyone has a good night. And I hope the, stu like the next student representatives are going to do a good job as well. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect as usual. Thank you, Ms. Zoya Flores. Uh, next, Ms. Tanoli. Good evening to the school board and everyone who's watching tonight. Um, I first want to thank the board for um, all the awards and the flowers that you guys gave me and Tanya. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is our last meeting, so I wanted to thank, um, I know this year has been so crazy and the pandemic and everything and you guys have done an amazing job um, especially Dr. Saunders thank you so much I know like um, every meeting you're always revising the like back to school and I know how frustrating that is and how many powerpoints there is like I just I would never be able to do that all the statistics and all that so thank you so much um Nassau Park is probably really glad to have you um, I also wanted to congratulate Tanya. Um, she's an amazing board member, a school board representative. She's an amazing athlete, and um, she's an amazing friend. Um, I congratulate you on graduating. I know this year was so difficult, and you did your whole senior year like virtually, which is crazy. Um, and um, I congratulate you. Sorry, I congratulate you with whatever you want to pursue in the future. Um, and I also wanted to remind students that um, I know this year has been crazy. So there is a pass and fail option if you guys want to take that. It won't affect your GPA. And I think it's a really good option because I know a lot of students um, went through so much during this pandemic. Some went through more, some went through less. But for the students that are struggling, um, there is that option. And there is also the option of the summer programs um, if you failed or if you need to redo an SOL. Um, I know there's that option, so uh, I highly, like, um, you guys should really take that into consideration if you guys need it. Uh, and thank you. Thank you. Also, perfect as usual, we are uh, very fortunate and blessed, I'll say, to have um, great students in Osborne, um, with the great principal back there, but um, you guys are amazing. And you may not really realize it now, how much of an impact your experience at Osborne will have on your lives, but it will. And maybe even more importantly, the impact that you two will have on your classmates and fellow students um, throughout the city because of what you've done. So I really thank you for your service and I appreciate what you've done. And I wish you well on your exams and you and your graduation. So thank you both. Next up, um, Mrs. Stevens. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Ms. Soria Flores and Ms. Tanoli, thank you for being amazing school representatives. Um, you are not dressed down. You're showing your school spirit, and that's what matters. Um, you will always look back on this year, and eventually you'll be able to laugh at all of the crazy and funny things and odd things that happened. And when other people say, ugh, school is so hard, you'll be able to say, well, you didn't live through 2021. So think on that. Um, 
I also want to congratulate the OHS SEA for the National Gold Council of Excellence. I think it was an award for the seventh year in a row. That's pretty amazing. That's a, a feat that not many schools can achieve. Um, and I am excited that when I heard about the OHS Baldwin Intermediate uh, Part Mentorship with the National Technical Honor Society. That's another great opportunity for our students to connect with each other, for our mentors to help teach our mentees and our mentees to learn from our mentors. And then I was on social media today and I saw that Baldwin has a pollinator garden. Um, I think that's a pretty amazing thing because the pollinator garden is teaching our students to be stewards of the environment and we really need that today. Um, and finally, this month is Mental Health Awareness Month. If you, a family member or a friend is struggling, please reach out to your school. We have people at the schools who can support you and help connect you with the proper resources. No one should struggle alone and no one should struggle in silence. There's no shame in asking for help. So if you feel that you or someone you love, someone you know needs help, please take a minute to reach out and we can connect you with the people who can help you out. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Uh, next, Mrs. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think I've already said what I needed to say to the two of you. And um, just again, thank you for all your service in this uh, very unconventional year. I don't have comments prepared today, but I wanted to congratulate um, all of our spotlights and again say goodbye to Dr. Saunders. Uh, your, your face will be missed, your articulate presentations will be missed, and um, I will continue to see you around town. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Williams. Mr. DeMario. Thank you, sir. Um, Dr. Stone has already texted me. <laughs> I won't tell you what she said. Uh, ladies, you two make us look so good. Um, you're, you're so intelligent, you're so articulate, and you will be missed greatly. Uh, congratulations on your graduation, and we'll see you next year. I'm not sure if you've applied for this again, but um, it, it's just been a joy to listen to you two. Um, and uh, we really appreciate that. Um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to announce this or not, but, but I'm going to. Um, on Saturday, we lost a member of the Manassas City Public Schools family. She didn't work for us and she um, didn't go to school here, but uh, Phyllis Schultz is one of the nicest ladies I've ever met. She is the kind of person when you're with her, you're comfortable. She makes you feel so good. Um, maybe it, it, she was a mother to everybody. When, when, you're, you're, when you were with, 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 with Phyllis, it, it just made you feel good. Phyllis is our, our, our um, uh, she's our clerk, what, what, she's our, si our assistant clerk, our, our deputy, deputy, clerk. deputy clerk, thank you. Don't leave, I need you. Um, Lee Miller's mother, she's coach Steve Schultz's mother, she's um, Jan Schultz from Rounds, mother-in-law. She's given us so much in the people that she's raised. Um, and uh, so if you, if, you, if you know, well, we all know Lee, um, Coach Schultz or, or, or Jan, uh, give them your best. They've lost a, a great, great person. Phyllis was, was Everybody is, when we lose them, you know, they were always great, but she truly was. She, she just made you feel so comfortable. And uh, I appreciate everything she did for Manassas City Public Schools by raising such great children and, uh, and uh, allowing them to help our children here. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. DeMario. Mr. Hollingsworth. Thank you, Councilman Williams. Um, I want to congratulate uh, the SEA council members recognized this evening, uh, seven and eight years consecutive of winning things is, a, is a, uh, an awesome uh, standard to set for the community and the future leaders. So congratulations as well to the new SEA members that were just recently 
elected to their leadership positions and they have uh, large shoes to fill. Um, Dr. Sanders, thank you for your service and your commitment to excellence. And uh, I hope I get a chance to work closer with you in the future. And uh, congratulations on your uh, jump across the street there. <laughs> thank you, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Uh, next, Mrs. Brooks. So I want to start by saying thank you to Mrs. Soria Flores and Ms. Tanoli. You guys are, you know, doing such a wonderful job getting your lives started and really being part of the community and, and giving service, and we really appreciate it. Uh, Dr. Saunders, you know, congratulations once again. Um, it's wonderful to hear about the, you know, the awards and accolades at the Student Council, and then we have the mentorship pro uh, programs. Um, to echo what Mrs. Stevens said, you know, this is Mental Health Month, and having those, you know, opportunities is a beneficial thing for our community. And I just want to remind everyone also to, you know, you know, check on your neighbors, your friends, you know. Lend a hand, mow a yard, you know, do something to help. It's been a trying time and everyone's really tired, so do what you can to, to help out and make someone smile. So and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Brooks. You, Mr. Chairman. No problem. Um, next Vice Chair Seberg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to say goodbye to Tanya. Thank you so much. I love hearing you talk every month at your reports at every meeting. Um, really appreciate it, and I wish you all the best. And Ms. Tanoli, we will be seeing you around, I'm sure. <laughs> um, thank you for all that you've done for us this year. Um, I wanted to say that one of the, my highlights of last week was um, some school visits. I went around with Dr. Newman to Weems. We went to every classroom to thank um, teachers for Teacher Appreciation Week and every classroom at Osborne as well. And it was just so good to see people and to be able to tell them how much we appreciate them and, and grateful for all their hard work this year. That was wonderful. Uh, and I just wanted to mention that every month, school board is presenting to the city council. Um, each month we, fit, we feature a, new, a different school and this month we'll be featuring Osborne High School. And Mr. Flugreth will be presenting and a student. It's at the next council meeting which is Monday, May 24th, so please tune in or join us here in City Council. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, before we close the meeting, I don't have any prepared comments, but I'll say three quick things. Uh, one quote that came to mind is that a, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. And if you know uh, Ms. Miller and Coach Schultz, you know that the people who bore them, the, the fruit, their parents, uh, Ms. Schultz has passed, um, were inc it's incredible. So uh, we really will miss her. And uh, I will keep Lee and Steve in my, my prayers and their family. Uh, the second thing is that May is also Asian American Pacific Islander Month. So please be cognizant of that. Read, study uh, with issues going on in this country with Asian hate as it's been captured. Uh, they're very significant and very important. We need to be aware of the fact that there are people in our community who are suffering, uh, not treated the way they should be treated. So please uh, educate yourself on that matter. And the last item I'll repeat with um, Mrs. Stevens said about this being Mental Health Awareness Month as well. Mental health awareness is very, very important. Um, I know that there's been an increase in the student population we have, K through 12 generally, of students who need help with their mental health. Uh, but something that kind of gets lost in the shuffle is adults as well. And there's a quote that I like to post periodically, uh, specifically towards adults, which says, um, you are not required to set yourself on fire or set yourself on fire to keep others warm. And we have so many people in our community. Uh, and just to be frank, this is probably more mom and women because in our community, the pandemic, women are still through the burden of the financial distress and also taking care of home, work, and everything else uh, who set themselves on fire to keep others warm. And they need to take care of their mental health as well. And it's for all adults, but just based on the statistics, predominantly women are the ones who do the most work in the society. So I just want to encourage everybody to take care of their mental health, not just for our students, which is important, but also for our adults. And with that, I'll ask for a motion for closed session. Mr. Chair, I move that the school board of the city of Manassas enter a closed session pursuant to exemptions from open meetings allowed by section 2.2-3711, part A, paragraph one of the Code of Virginia, 1950, as amended for the following purposes. 
2.2-3711, Part A, Paragraph 2, Discussion of Candidates for the School Board Student Representatives for the 2021-22 school year. STUE 2021-02, STUE 2021-03, STUE 2021-04, 2105, 2106, and 2107. Second. Motion by Vice Chair Seberg, second by, and I'll get this mic thing <laughs> down one of these days, uh, second by Ms. Stevens, uh, that the school board of the city of Manassas enter a closed session pursuant to exemptions from open meetings allowed by section 2.2-3711 Part A, paragraph one of the Code of Virginia 1950s amended for the following purposes. 2.2-3711 Part A, paragraph two, Discussion of candidates for the school board student representatives for the 21-22 school year, STUE 2021-02 through 07 inclusive. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it 7-0. We are entering closed session. And thank you all for being here.